Welcome to BIR Matters Guide. Ang topic natin sa video ito ay kung ano itong 8% income tax in the Philippine taxation. So this is an income tax rate introduced by the train law which took effect last January 1, 2018. Under Section 24 of the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997 as amended, a self-employed individual and or professional shall have the option to avail of an 8% tax on gross sales or gross receipts and other non-operating income in excess of 250,000 pesos in lieu of the graduated income tax rates under subsection A2A of this section and the percentage tax under section 116 of this code. So, paano ba maka-avail ng 8% income tax rate? So, ayon sa Revenue Memorandum Order Number 23-2018 na inisyo ng BIR, mayroon po ito apat na kriteria. So yung una, dapat ikaw ay individual, single proprietor or professional or mixed income earner earning from self-employment and or practice of profession. So itong mixed income earner, ito po yung taxpayer na nag earn from compensation at the same time may kita siya from business. Then yung pangalawang criteria is dapat yung taxpayer ay yung gross sales niya, the other non-operating income did not exceed the 3 million baht threshold during the taxable year. Then, yung pangatlong criteria, dapat yung taxpayer is registered and subject only to percentage tax under Section 116 of the National Internal Revenue Code of 1997 as amended or the taxpayer is exempt from but or other percentage taxes. So, dapat yung taxpayer is registered at subject sa percentage tax under Section 116 only. Kasi may ibang percentage tax like yung sa common carrier, hindi yun under sa Section 116. Then, yung pang-apat na criteria is dapat mag-signify yung taxpayer to elect the 8% income tax rate through any enumeration under number 7 of section 2 of this revenue memorandum order. So, how to signify the intention to avail of 8% income tax rate? So, for new business registrant, Pwede po kayo mag-signify upon registration using BIR Form 1901 and or 1701Q. Kasi dito pa lang mare-reflect na sa certificate of registration nyo na nag kayo ng 8% income tax rate. Then hindi mare-reflect sa COR nyo na mayroon kayong percentage tax. Then on the other hand, kung na issuehan na kayo ng COR so pwede kayo mag-avail ng 8% income tax rate during the initial quarter using BIR form 2551Q and 1701Q for the taxable year after the commencement of a new business or practice of profession. For existing individual business taxpayer, pwede po kayo mag-signify to avail the 8% income tax rate by filing the BIR form 1905 at the beginning of the taxable year. So dito isusurrender nyo yung dati yung certificate of registration kasi papalitan yan ng BIR at tatanggalin nila yung percentage tax na tax type. If ever naman hindi ka mag update ng certificate of registration, pwede ka mag-signify to avail the 8% income tax rate by filing the first quarterly percentage tax return and first quarterly income tax return. Then, the income tax rate option once selected shall be irrevocable and no amendment of option shall be made for the taxable year it has been made. Then, sino naman ang hindi pwede maka-avail ng 8% income tax option? So, ayon sa Revenue Memorandum Order Number 23-2018, isa sa mga hindi pwede maka-avail ay yung purely compensation income earner. So, kung ikaw ay isang taxpayer na yung source mo lang of income ay yung salary mo, so wala kang business, so ikaw ay hindi qualified mag-avail ng option. Then, yung pangalawa, kung ikaw ay BAT registered, so kahit yung sales mo ay below 3 million na BAT threshold, so hindi ka pa rin pwede mag-avail. Then yung pangatlo, kung ang taxpayer is exempt from BAT and other percentage tax but to sales and other non-operating income exceeds 3 million BAT threshold during the year, so hindi ka pwede mag -appeal. So kahit qualified yung ano mo, registered activity, kaya lang lag lagpas ka na sa 3 million, so hindi ka talaga pa makaka -appeal. Then yung pangapat, Kung ang taxpayer ay subject to other percentage taxes under Title 5 of the Tax Code as amended except those subject to Section 116 of the same title. 
So, yung subject lang dito na, yung pwede lang maka-avail na percentage sa taxpayer ay yung under section 116. So, other than that, hindi na pwede. Then, yung panglima, yung mga partner sa general professional partnership. Kasi yung na-distribute daw na share nila is sub na subject na sa deduction. So, ma parang madudubol exemption na sila. So, kaya hindi na sila pwede mag -avail. Then, yung pang-anim ay yung individuals enjoying income tax exemption. So, kung may mga tax exemption na na-avail yung taxpayer, so hindi na siya pwede mag-avail ng 8% income tax option. Then, paano naman ina-apply ang 8% income tax rate? So, for purely self-employed business and or practice of profession, an 8% income tax on gross sales or receipts and other non-operating income in excess of 250,000 in lieu of graduated income tax rate and percentage tax under Section 116 under the National Internal Revenue Code as amended. So, this means yung sales mo babawasan ng 250,000, then yung difference mo multiply sa 8% income tax rate. Then yung result niyan, yan yung income tax due. Pero yung, yung gross sales po dito na na-mention is dapat net siya ng, ng sales return at saka yung sales discount. Then kung ano man yung makompute na 8% na income tax, yan na yung babayaran in lieu of income tax and percentage tax. So di ka na magbabayad ng percentage tax. So, let's try an illustration. Assuming Mr. A avail of the 8% income tax option in year 2019 and he has the following information. So, my gross sales siya na 1,100,000, then sales discount na 100,000, then expenses na 500,000. So, what is Mr. A's income tax due? So, yung gross sales niya na 1,100,000, then less sales discount na 100,000, so my net sales siya na 1,000,000. Then, babawasan niya ng 250,000. Then, yung difference yan, yung tax base, multiply ng 8%. So, yung income tax due na is 60,000. Then, paano naman ina-apply ang 8% income tax rate kung ang taxpayer ay mixed income earner? So, ang mixed income earner na taxpayer, ito po ay taxpayer na nag earn from compensation at the same time nag earn siya from business or practice of profession. So, dito yung compensation income niya inihiwalay kasi sinasubject yan sa graduated income tax rate. Yan yung subject sa table. Then, yung income naman niya from business or practice of profession shall be subject to 8% income tax rate based on gross sales receipts and other non-operating income in lieu of the graduated income tax rate and percentage tax under Section 116 of the National Internal Revenue Code as amended. So, kung mapapansin niyo dito, yung gross sales niya hindi na babawasan ng 250,000. Agad siya imumultiply ng 8% income tax. Kasi yung 250 ginamit na doon sa pag-compute ng income tax doon sa compensation. So let's try an illustration for a mixed income earner taxpayer. So assuming Mr. B availed the 8% income tax option in year 2019 and he has the following information. So sales is 500,000, compensation income is 200,000, cost and expenses is 250,000. So question, what is Mr. B's income tax due for taxable year 2019? So dito, unahin muna natin yung compensation. So isa subject siya sa graduated income tax rate. So pag sinubject natin yan sa table, so mas mababa pa siya sa 250, so that is zero. So wala siyang tax due. Then, Second step is pupuntahan na natin yung sales. So yung sales niya multiply agad yan sa 8% na income tax rate. So lalabas yan income tax due na 40,000. So dito hindi na tayo mag-aalaw ng 250,000 kasi yung 250,000 ginamit na sa pag-compute sa graduated income tax rate doon sa compensation. Then any excess of 250 doon sa pag-compute sa compensation hindi na siya pwede makari over as deduction dito sa pag-compute naman sa 8% income tax rate. Then, paano naman kinocompute ang income tax due ng taxpayer na nag ng 8% income tax option kaya lang yung gross sales receipts and other non-operating income niya ay nag-exceed ng 3 million na bad threshold. So under Revenue Memorandum Order Number 23-2018, the individual shall be subjected to graduated income tax rate prescribed under Section 24 of the National Internal Revenue Code as amended. 
So let's try an illustration assuming Mr. C signified his intention to avail the 8% income tax option in year 2019 and he has the following information. So my sales share January to October na 2,900,000. Then sales for November is 200,000. Sales for December is 250,000. Then my cost and expenses share January to December na 2 million pesos. Then question, what is Mr. C's income tax due? So in this case, naglagpas po siya sa 3 million na threshold. So under Revenue Memorandum Order Number 23-2018, automatically subject siya sa graduated income tax rate. So yung sales niya na 3,350,000, babawasan yan ng 2 million. So magkakaroon siya ng taxable net income na 1,350,000. So yung 1,350,000 isa subject siya sa graduated income tax rate. So yung tax due na is 295,000 based doon sa graduated income tax table. Then maliban sa pagiging subject sa graduated income tax rate ni Mr. C., he will be liable also to pay the percentage tax for the month of January to November 2019. Then he will also be liable to pay VAT for the month of December 2019. Then he is mandated to update his registration to VAT in the month of December 2019. Then, however, he can avail the income tax credit for whatever income tax he paid in the first, second, and third quarter income tax return. Now, ano naman ang mga advantages at disadvantages kung ang taxpayer ay mag ng 8% income tax option? So, unahin natin yung advantages. So, una, madaling i-compute ang income tax kasi i-multiply lang yan ng 8% or gross sales list 250,000 times 8%. So, madaling i-compute ang income tax. Then, pangalawang advantage is you no longer required to attach financial statement when filing an annual income tax return. Then, yung pangatlo na nakita ko is income tax rate of 8% is lower than income tax rate in graduated income tax table. Kasi under the graduated income tax table, yung pinakamaliit doon na rate is 20%. Then, yung pinakamalaki naman is 35%. Then, pang-apat na advantage is you no longer subject to percentage tax under Section 116 of the NIRC. Now, ano naman ang mga disadvantages kung ikaw ay mag ng 8% income tax option? So, una, yung deduction mo is limited lang to 250,000, meaning the higher the sales, the higher the amount to be subjected to income tax. Another disadvantage is that pag nag ka ng 8% income tax option, that is revocable during the taxable year. So, hindi ka pwede mag-change of mind during the year. Then another disadvantage is that for mixed income earner, any excess of 250,000 na inapply doon sa compensation, hindi mo na pwede makari over as deduction sa sales mo. So that's it for the 8% income tax rate. Don't forget to subscribe this channel. Thank you.